And I went into one of my daughter's room and she wanted me to braid her hair, braid her hair. She was fully dressed. But when she got to the car, she had a different outfit. I said, well, what happened? Why you, why you change your clothes? She said, I didn't like it. So I changed it. <laughs> if that don't preach, I don't know. I, I'm done. I'm going to drop the mic. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. If you don't like it, change it. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. I'm excited to be able to meet with you all again. For those of you who don't know, my name is Candy Zena and I'm an author and a life coach and a CEO founder of Changing Seasons Life Coaching, where I help single moms strengthen their faith, family, and finances through one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentorships, books, and live events. And today I just want to come and help you just live one more day greater than you did before. So as you've seen the title, we're talking about letting go of the past and freeing up the present. Have you ever been in the situation that you had seen somebody um, that you knew and you were telling them a story about the person who wronged you or who betrayed you or who lied about you or who, who used you or who, who owe you money? And then did that person ever stop and say, oh no, when did that happen? And sometimes the stories that you're telling, you don't even realize that that was five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Because in your mind, it's still fresh. That wound is still open and you're still seething. You're still seething mad about that situation. And truth is, it's in the past and it's when still heavy on your mind and your heart. And how do you know? Because sometimes people say, oh, yeah, I forgave them, but I didn't forget. How did you how do you know you truly forgave them? You truly know if you still experience an emotion behind it. If you still feel that actual angst, that actual I want, I'm a I'm a. Will Smith, Chris Rockham, when I see him. <laughs> Is it too soon? <laughs> Is it too soon? I'm a mosey on the lawn on that stage. And I'm going to give that person a good slap when I see them because they did such and such. Or maybe you're the type that you, you're not going to slap them. You don't want to do no harm to them. You don't want to be bothered with them again. You don't want them in your life again. You don't want to talk to them again. But yet every chance you get, you are still telling the story, you're rehearsing the past. Case in point, I do this workshop called preparing to be the bride. And it, yes, it is preparing an earthly bride for her earthly husband. But the main uh, genesis of the class, of the course is to prepare the church for Christ. I was passing out my flyers and I, I went to this one particular place and I asked, can I leave flyers? And the lady was disgusted. And I was like, what did I do her? She's like, well, you know, what's going on? But anyway, come to find out, she had this tarnished cluster. What's my left hand? It's my left hand. She had this tarnished cluster ring on. It was tarnished. I don't, I don't believe it was diamonds. And she had on this long black outfit. The skirt reached her ankles like she was in mourning. So she proceeded to tell me a guy that she was engaged to. They planned a big old fancy wedding. She got to the front of the church only to find out he had left. He had left the, the night before the wedding. And the woman he left to go and meet, he married her. He eventually buried her. And so she says she keeps the ring on her finger to remind her never to do that, make that mistake again, that same mistake again. The only thing it did was build a memorial to her past. 
That's it. It reminded her every day to rehearse the story, the, the reasons why she was going to keep herself from love, keep herself from trying it again, keep herself from somebody who may have desired to, to marry her and treat her like the queen that she really is. For God said that we are a treasure. Our worth is far greater than rubies. We are apple of his eye. And he has representation here on earth to show that as well. So the man that she did not marry, she should say thank you. Thank you that you didn't give me a lifetime of not really choosing me. And you know when somebody don't really like you, they really haven't chosen you, they're rude to you, they're curt, they're mean, they're dismissive, they're abusive verbally and physically, emotionally. So she should have just said thank you because in his heart of hearts, he did not choose her. And so he, he honored that and she should appreciate that. So in your heart of hearts, I want you to choose you. I, it's okay, look back. Let's, let's review the stories that you tell yourself daily. The record that plays in your head over and over. Cause whatever, maybe it wasn't beauty or ugly. Maybe someone called you stupid. Maybe someone called you too short to make the, the, the team, or maybe they never chose you for the team, or maybe you never made the cut with the, with, with, with the cool girls in class. Whatever it was that, that made you feel like you were inadequate, tell yourself a truth. Tell you, go to the word, get you a scripture, get you an affirmation, get you something to stand on that you believe true about yourself. Find an attribute, an attribute around surrounding yourself, your character, your personality that you appreciate or admire about yourself. There's got to be something, your smile, your height, your looks, your laugh, your legs, your butt. You know I mean, that's the, that's the hot thing going now. You know, everybody's shaking their butt in the camera. So whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, celebrate that one thing. And then you start, because it's so funny, whatever you focus on grows, right? So you will start seeing other attributes you like. Like, you know what? I like the way that I communicate. Or I like the fact that I may, I can make people laugh. I like the fact when I enter into a room, I see no strangers. That everybody in that room becomes my friend. I like the fact that I can take a lick and keep on ticking. I have resilience. You know, I like the fact that I'm a strategist, an analyzer. I like the fact that I'm able to run my household efficiently and effectively find an attribute in your physical or in your character or even both and start celebrating it it's like the red car effect you ever purchase a red car and then you start seeing the exact same red car everywhere you go that's what happens whatever you focus on grows this way when the past stopped running freely in your mind, and remember, you seen I put on my side, give us us free, <laughs> give us us free. That's what your presence is asking for. It's asking for freedom, freedom to be create creative. Because God says, I give you creative knowledge to gain wealth. So if Satan have the opportunity to keep stealing your time, and your, your mind power, so they're not able to think creatively. A little sleep, a little slumber and poverty sets in. Because he know your wealth lies in your creativity. God says, I give you creative knowledge to gain, to gain wealth. So if Satan had the opportunity to keep stealing your creativity, he's stealing your wealth. We're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about legacy building. We're talking about your children and your children and your children's children being set free just by you freeing up time space in your mind. Release the past. Let go of the past regardless of the pull. And even I seen a great movie earlier today about Kevin Durant's mother, a single mom 
who raised two great sons, an NBA player and a college graduate. But she was in love with their dad. And no matter what, she held on to his ring. He, he made baby a, a baby outside of their marriage. He'll come in and out her life. He wouldn't stand there and help co-parent effectively. He will give child support, but that was it. But she held a torch in her heart for this man. Ain't we all been there? Girl, we could gas, grab some black girl magic wine and talk about a thing or two. But we all have been there that we held a torch in our heart for that one specific person who just wouldn't do right. It was like, can't get right. Just can't get right. Just can't get right. And here you are and waiting for them to love you. Waiting for them to love you. Tick tock. Waiting for them to love you. Tick tock. What does love look like? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is of good report. Tick tock. They still not doing right. Tick tock. And guess what? The days are passing. It's turning into weeks now. It's turning into months now. It's turning into years now. Turn the page. We're in a new year. Then we decades pass. Decades. Uh-oh, we hit a millennium. Uh-oh, new century. So you do not want to waste your entire time with one person when they have 8 billion people on this earth. Write down the characteristics that you like from that person because we don't do nothing unless it give us value, right? You like, that person do something well. They did something, they treated you like a queen when they was with you, when it was your turn, right? When it was your turn, they treated you like a queen. They open doors, they pay for meals, oh, they sex you down, whatever it was. Write down the attributes that you like. They made you laugh. They gave you money without asking. It was something of a value of a benefit that you received from that person. Although everything else they did, they made you cry. Well, just write down the good things and say, in my new healthy relationship, I want my partner to have these characteristics and qualities. I want them to make me laugh. I want them to open doors. I want them to be romantic, whatever that is. I want them to be athletic, whatever that is. But trust me, if that one person that you're waiting on haven't came through, stop waiting. Simple as that, right? It's so funny. One time I went, um, you know, when the girls were younger, I, I would go to each person's room to see, to make sure that they were getting ready for school and that, did they need me or, you know, just to chat a little bit. And I went into one of my daughter's room and she wanted me to braid her hair, braid her hair. She was fully dressed. But when she got to the car, she had a different outfit. I said, well, what happened? Why you, why you change your clothes? She said, I didn't like it. So I changed it. <laughs> If that don't preach, I don't know. I'm done. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. If you don't like it, change it. See how simple that is? I live a very simple life. If I don't like something, I just simply change it. I don't have to have a committee meeting. I don't have to have a, 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 a survey. I don't have to have multiple opinions. I don't even have to have anyone else input. If something needs to be, if something don't feels right in my knower, in my soul, in my gut, change it. You need to know if you don't like something, you have the power to change it. The most powerful weapon in your weaponry, in your arsenal right now is the power of a made up mind. This is going to free up your mind and release you from the past. And you're going to start seeing things start rushing in your mind that, that, that's been waiting to come. Method, revelation, insight, strategy, answers to questions that been in your heart, been troubling you, but it couldn't get through. The channel was blocked with who wronged you, who betrayed you, who hurt you, who left you, who should have stayed, who wasn't a real friend, who came to steal, who came to stab you in the back. 
So revelation, creativity, knowledge, insight, strategy, it couldn't get to you. The road was packed just like it's a traffic jam, a traffic jam of all of the past. And all you need to do is put on the green light, send out that traffic police. You know, the one say left, turn left, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right. Release them from your heart, your mind, and your spirit. And now when that traffic jam clears up, you have that space to think, to focus, which saves you time and eventually saves you money. Why it saves you money? Because when you're trying to make ends meet, God already trying to give you a creative strategy to gain wealth. But now you're able to hear him. Now you're able to think creatively. I remember a lady had asked to borrow $50 for me, which $50 is not nothing. And I'm like, you can't really do nothing with $50. What is going to get you? So I went to her house to bring her the $50. And I would, as I entered her house, she had a, a table at the entrance of her door with a beautiful vase. I was like, oh, where did you buy that? It's so pretty. She said, girl, I made that from Dollar Tree. I was like, what? You asked for $50? I would have easily paid $120 for this vase. I would have paid, it was a floral arrangement. So that's your money. But she didn't put the two and two together, make some floor arrangements, go and sell them. That's your extra income. I taught this class at the Lunch and Learn, and a lady had owed, I think, uh, I want to say $120 light bill. So I was talking about creative ways to get income fast. And so I said, everybody pull out your phone. Okay, what are you known for? And so... I thought people was going to say, make a mean macaroni and cheese or babysit or, or braid hair. But this lady actually said that she, she fixed iPhones and cleaned viruses off of computers. I was like, have you ever did that for anybody in your contact list? And she said, yes. I said, would you be comfortable putting a monetary uh, value on that? And she said, uh, no. I said, what about... $98. She said, no. I said, well, what about $60? She said, okay, $60. I said, text those people that you performed those services for, for before and see if they need those services again. So she texts five people. Two people responded that they needed her real fast. I said, tell them that you'll do it for $60. They said, okay, when one person says Saturday, one person said a Tuesday. I said, boom, that's your $120. Now go and pay your light bill. Creative knowledge to gain wealth. God is trying to get you those strategies. But like I said, you can't hustle hungry. She was, her mind was probably bombarded with stress of now or past or the man who didn't come through or who she called and didn't answer the phone. And she was trying to figure out how to pay the light bill, but God was trying to give her the answer all the while. So clear the traffic, clear the traffic jam from the source, which is God to you, which is the point of need. And he's able to give that to you. If you release the past, regardless of the pull from all time, space, and dimension, free them people, give us us free and you have the power to free, free yourself. Once again, this is Candy Zenon, author and life coach, helping you hopefully love through it, learn from it, and live after it. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye.